Hi, in this lesson I'm going to show you how to make a torch in the dark interaction in Adobe Captivate using just two widgets, the InfoSemantics custom cursor widget and the InfoSemantics masquerade widget. So let's dive in and have a look at the project that we're going to use. So what I've got in this project is a simple building induction which is achieved by having a number of slides and on each slide I've got an image of a different room or section of the building and the task for the user is to go through the building and find the fire escape which is a normal task for any building induction. So I've done this uh, by just having the image there and putting uh, smart shapes over the top of the different doors that the user has got to find and then right clicking on the smart shape converting it to a, a rollover smart shape and then uh, attaching a event handler widget to the rollover area so that when you click on the rollover area it will move you to the appropriate slide. So let's just have a look and see how that works out. So here in my main stairwell, I can click over here to go to the lift. I can click over here to have a look at the lift buttons. Then move back, go over here. There's a nice door, zoom up on the door handle, go inside, and then I can go back out. And I'll probably have a bit of an extra thing that allows me to go down the fire escape eventually when I expand this interaction. Okay, so this is a pretty good uh, induction just to start with but we can make this much more challenging by making the user have to do it in the dark and all they've got is a torch for moving about in the building. So how can we achieve this interaction? Well, first of all, to simulate the torch, we're going to have to have an object that follows the mouse cursor. And in order to do that, we're going to use the custom cursor widget. So to get the custom cursor widget to work, what you're going to need is an object to act as the cursor. And I'm going to use this object over here, which is just this big blurry circle. I'm going to move it onto stage as well as my custom cursor widget. We'll come back for the masquerade widget in a second. Okay, so here's how the custom cursor widget works. First of all, you add an object that will act as your cursor. You give it a name. And over here, I've just called it cursor, very simple. Okay, then double click on the custom cursor widget to go to its settings. You can choose an up cursor and a down cursor. There's a lot of settings over here in the custom cursor widget. And if you want to learn about them, go over and have a look at the custom cursor tutorials that we've made. But just quickly for this lesson, what I'm going to do is click on the select cursor image uh, button, and this will bring up the select cursor image dialog. And I'm going to put in the name of that object on slide cursor, which is I want to act as the uh, custom cursor. Click done, click OK. And let's just test the movie to see how that widget is working. So in the output here, we can see that this sphere is now following my mouse cursor, but we do have one problem. And that is we sort of expect the mouse cursor to be positioned in the middle of this sphere. But as we can see, when I roll over the corner of the movie here, the top left corner of this image is acting as the mouse cursor point. So what we want to do is offset that so it's somewhere in the middle of this uh, sphere. So to do that, I'm first of all going to select the image and I'm going to see, okay, it's got a width of 100 and a height of 100. So the center point of this image so a width of 200 and a height of 200. So the center point of this image is 100 by 100 on the X and the Y. So I'm going to double click into the custom cursor widget, go back to the select cursor image section, and I'm going to set the pointer X to 100 and the pointer Y to 100 as well. Click done to that dialog and click OK. And they'll test the movie again. And by using that same trick, rolling over the top left corner, we can see that is now the center of this uh, curse, this image that is acting as the mouse cursor. Okay, so we've got our mouse cursor set up, but what we want to happen now is to have this image reveal the room. Okay, to do that, what we're going to need to use is a mask. So let's just go back over here, grab our masquerade widget, drag it onto the slide. So if you have looked at any of our tutorials on the masquerade widget, you know that you need two objects. The first object is the mask or the object that's going to reveal the masky, which is the second object, the object that's going to be hidden. So the 
cursor is going to act as our mask and this background image is going to act as our maskee. So as we can see here, the name of our maskee is main underscore background. So I'm going to double click into the masquerade widget and for mask, I'm going to type in the cursor and for maskee, I want that main underscore background. Then click OK, use transparency is going to be fine. OK, let's test. And here we have half our interaction working with revealing the uh, room according to our mouse cursor here. So it sort of looks like a torch, but the background is completely wrong. We've got this big white background. What we want is it to look dark. So we need a black background. That's easily enough done. I'm just going to go over to my master slides here. And uh, if you've got that project background section checked, uncheck it and then choose the stage color as black. And that's going to apply across all the objects that have been attached to this master slide, of which um, all these uh, uh, slides have. So let's just have a look at that. Okay, that's, uh, that's much better. Okay, and just one thing I'd like to show you, just in case you haven't got your uh, idea of how this transparency section works, if I uncheck that, click OK, and then test the movie, you can see that this widget is no longer taking into account the uh, smooth transparency that we've got in the image. So that's what the use transparency checkbox does. It allows, uh, it takes into account the uh, smooth transparency of a image. Okay, so now that is working for one slide, but if I test the movie, we can see that if I move across to the next room, it's not working there. So we've only got this working for one slide. So what we can do to get this working for the others is copy our cursor, paste it onto every slide as well as our widgets and then rename the cursor something else and have to go into the custom cursor widget, put in that new name, put in the new names into the masquerade widget as well. However, that is very labor intensive and every single time you add a new slide to this interaction, of which there could be many, many, potentially hundreds, you're gonna to have to do that as well. What we really want is a lazy approach to this where we can just set it up on the first slide and we don't have to worry about it for the rest of the movie. And we can achieve that by using the rest of project feature. So all I'm going to do is select the cursor, in the timing section, I'm going to change it from rest of slide to rest of project. So that's going to appear for every single slide in the rest of the project. And I'm going to do the same for my custom cursor widget, set it to rest of project. And for the moment, I'm just going to drag the masquerade widget off the slide so it's not published. We're not going to see the results of that mask, but we will off the cursor. So on the first slide here, I've got my cursor. And as I move to my next slides, we've got the cursor appearing on each one of them. Okay, cool. So now we've got to put in the mask interaction. So we'll drag that mask widget back onto the slide, but we have a problem. Okay, so if we double, double click into our mask widget, we can see that the mask key is main underscore background, but that main underscore background image is only on the first slide here. Here we can see main underscore background. If I move to the next slide, we can see that the background image there is called lift underscore background. And for the slide after that is called controller underscore background. So we can't set that masquerade widget to display for rest of project because on every single slide, the name of this background image is different. But wouldn't it be nice if we could still set the masquerade widget to display for rest of slide and just tell it, okay, each one of these images that I want you to use as a masquee has this underscore background syntax on it. If you find that object, use that as the masquee. Well, you can do this using a feature called at syntax. So let's jump back over to our masquerade widget, double click inside and under here in the masquee section, select that main name and type in an at instead of it. So this at is now going to act as a wild card. It's going to go into every single slide. It's going to find the first object it can find with uh, this underscore, underscore background syntax on it. And it's going to use that as the mask key. Now the rule of a mask can only have one mask key still applies in this circumstance. It's only going to find the first object with underscore background on it. So if you've got two objects on the slide with underscore background in their uh, name at the end of their name, 
then it's only going to grab the first one and it's going to ignore the second one. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so now with that change made to the masquerade widget, we're going to just set it to display for rest of project and then we'll test the movie. And now as we move through each slide, we can see that this very cool torch interaction is working across every single one of them. And so if we want to add another slide to this interaction, all we have to do is, well, put in the background image and give it a name of underscore background. And because the cursor graphic, the cursor widget and the masquerade widget are carried across on all the rest of the slides of the movie, it's automatically going to carry across that interaction as well. So this is a really quick interaction to set up for any one of your courses and it will hopefully give you an idea of other things you can do.